let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Our New Testament reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and I'm beginning with verse 5. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail the test. But I trust that you will realize that we ourselves do not fail the test. Now we pray to God that you do no wrong, not that we ourselves may appear approved, but that you may do what is right, even though we may appear unapproved. For we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. For we rejoice when we ourselves are weak, but you are strong. This we also pray for, that you be made complete. For this reason I am writing these things with, while absent, so that when present I need not use severity, in accordance with the authority which the Lord gave me for building up, not for tearing down. Finally, brethren, rejoice. Be made complete. Be comfortable and comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. This is the word of God given to us through the writings of the Apostle Paul. And in gratitude we say, thanks Thanks be be to God. God. You know, test anxiety is a real thing. Some students fear failing. Other students may fear letting down the people who have supported them in their education, either emotionally and financially. Yet students get anxious and nervous because sometimes they haven't studied well. Older students, well, they don't trust their memories (laughs) to recall what they had studied and read. School administrators and teachers encourage their students to be prepared, well-rested, well-fed, and well-informed prior to the time of testing to help relieve some of that fear. Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, and he's anxious for the church. This is Paul's third out of fourth writing to the community of faith there. His words, though, each time grow terser with each writing. Paul means business here. He knows what the Corinth church is dealing with. There's false teaching on the inside and amoral living on the outside. Probably on the inside as well. You could say that Paul's calling us all to a time of self-examination. First, he wrote, test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. How easy it is to look at others and stand in judgment. Oh, I see what you're doing wrong. Oh, I see you're wrong. How hard it is to stop and look inside. And notice, too, Paul here is writing in the plural. Yourselves. Uh. Paul knows that we cannot mentor or teach as a community of faith until we are united and secured in what we believe. We need to be clear where we stand in our faith before we suppose that we can teach others. I have a question for you this Sunday. How long has it been since you talked to the Lord? Are you waiting for Sunday worship? Or maybe that a Bible study 
that you enjoy? Or are you disciplining yourself to daily seek the Lord through prayer and scripture and receiving God's comfort and discernment in these days? When you rise in the morning, do you thank God for another day? Or is it more like, oh Lord, it's another day? Are you daily seeking Him throughout your day? How am I doing, Lord? Was that a kind word, or do I need to take that one back? Do you examine yourself when you lay down to rest? Daily examination like this is what keeps us grounded in our faith. It also reminds us that we are not responsible for the whole world. It keeps us in our place. Paul says that we have what we need because Christ Jesus dwells within us. The Holy Spirit is present in each believer. We only fail the test if we fail to recognize the teacher who is our triune God. Paul here writes of the test, and when he does, he's referring to the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper. Let's reflect on Holy Communion. It's been a while. Since we, as a community of faith, have partaken together Holy Communion. The Eucharist points back to the Passover and the covenant made with Israel that is now in Christ renewed for us. The Eucharist points back to the inclusive meals that Jesus celebrated with his disciples and with the outcast of his time. You know, he ate with sinners. Since in the sharing there is one loaf, one cup, We remember that all Christians have membership in one church. Looking forward, there will be a time when all Christians will celebrate together the breaking of the bread in the name of Christ. Discipleship is not individual and Christian life is not just congregational. Beloved, there is one body, one church, one faith, one hope, one baptism. There is one loaf and one table for all. Here's a warning, students of Christ. If you begin your examination with the assurance that you have it, you have arrived, please offer God an apology, a humble one, for sitting on his throne. We need to come before our perfect and holy God with our true self, a sinner saved by grace. Think for a moment the confession that we make when we prepare to receive Holy Communion. I will say it sentence by sentence here. Please repeat it with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We confess that we have not loved you We have failed to be an obedient church. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have broken your laws. 
We have rebelled against your love. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The good news, we know it. It's the truth that Paul wrote about. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. We are through the blood of Christ saved and forgiven. And Paul says in this truth, rejoice. We live with hard realities in these present days. We carry past burdens and present burdens, and we live wary. What's going to come next? Rejoice. Be made complete. Be comforted by the truth of the gospel. Be in close communion with God and his people. All our brothers and sisters in Christ, be like-minded. Proverbs 3, 7 says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And the God of love and peace will be with you. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church and called to them, told them it's a time of self Examination, it's testing time. How will we, as the church, stand in these present days? You know, the only time we fail a test is when we do not seek God in prayer. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.